during a close flyby of the Parker Solar Probe, which was sent to investigate the Sun. NASA was able to record eerie sounds originating from Venus's upper atmosphere. According to the NASA team in charge of the probe, the natural radio signal is assisting researchers in their study of the atmosphere of Earth's less hospitable twin. The sounds were recorded by the space agency as the Parker probe flew by the planet at its closest ever flyby altitude of only 517 miles. What could this be? Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at a haunting sound coming from the upper atmosphere of Venus. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. And let's dive in. The Solar Probe is operated by NASA's Goddard Space Center and was on its third flyby of Venus on July 11, 2020 when it discovered the radio signal and its unsettling sound. The radio signal was picked up by the probe during the flyby of Venus, which brought it closer to the planet than any of its prior flybys. The probe was on its way back to study the sun at the time. In order to investigate our star and go as close to the sun's core as possible, by 2025, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe in 2018. A naturally occurring radio signal was picked up by the probe, indicating that the spacecraft had passed through the planet's upper atmosphere and was only 517 miles from the surface. A recent analysis of the data shows that it appears very different from Venus's history, which was the last time the atmosphere had been directly measured in nearly 30 years. According to the new research, during the course of a solar cycle, the Sun's 11-year activity cycle, Venus's upper atmosphere experiences puzzling changes. This is the most recent piece of information that helps explain how and why Venus and Earth are so dissimilar while sharing a common genesis. According to NASA, the twin planets Earth and Venus are both rocky, comparable in size, and have similar structures, but their courses have separated since birth. Since Venus lacks a magnetic field, and its surface broils at temperatures hot enough to melt lead, spacecraft dispatched to study it can only stay there for a few hours at a time, even though Venus is uninhabitable. Research on it aids in our understanding of the evolution of these twin planets and what makes Earth-like planets habitable or not. In an effort to use Venus's gravity to reduce its sideways motion and enable the Parker Solar Probe to reach the Sun without overshooting the star, the spacecraft is now travelling very close to Venus. It took three flybys for the signal to be picked up, and each orbit of the second planet helped the probe come closer and closer to its goal of passing 4.3 million miles from the Sun's centre. When it finally approaches the Sun's atmosphere, the probe will be moving at a speed of 430,000 miles per hour, making it the fastest spacecraft ever built for humans. Scientist Glenn Collision of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, who served as the study's principal investigator, admitted, I was just so delighted to receive new data from Venus. Collinson has meticulously examined all of the Venus data from this mission as well as earlier ones like the NASA Pioneer Venus Orbiter and the ESA Venus Express. Collinson is an authority on Venus. For the electric and magnetic fields, it measures in the Sun's atmosphere. One of the Parker Solar Probe's instruments is called Fields. The Fields instrument discovered an organic, low-frequency radio signal emanating from Venus's upper atmosphere during its seven-minute flyby. Although Collinson claimed he initially had trouble identifying the shape and intensity of the signal, he later had a flash of awareness and exclaimed, I know what this is. Collinson was able to identify the signal because, to his prior experience working with NASA's Galileo Orbiter, which investigated Jupiter and its satellites before the mission's termination in 2003. A layer of electrically charged gas in the ionosphere is what causes the frown that Galileo observed when he flew through the ionospheres of Jupiter's moons. According to NASA, this plasma sea of charged gases naturally releases radio waves 
that can be picked up by equipment like fields. Collinson and his team described it as a pleasant surprise when they realized Parker Solar Probe had skimmed Venus's upper atmosphere when they recognized that signal. The radio emission gave enough information to compute the ionosphere's density and compare it to measurements made by Pioneer in 1992. So when Pioneer Venus Orbiter made its close approach to our sister planet, the Sun was almost at its solar maximum, the turbulent apex of its 11-year solar cycle. As the Sun entered its calm phase, solar minimum, observations from Earth during the ensuing years showed that changes were occurring in Venus. The majority of the atmosphere remained largely same according to data collected from the ground, but the ionosphere substantially thinner when the Sun was at its least active, which is impossible to confirm without direct measurements from a spacecraft. The puzzle in Venus's ionosphere is confirmed by observations made during the most recent flyby of the Parker Solar Probe, which took place six months after the most recent solar minimum. As stated by a NASA representative, Venus ionosphere is actually significantly thinner compared to prior observations made during solar maximum. According to Robin Ramstad, a study co-author and researcher at the University of Colorado, Boulder, when numerous missions are confirming the same conclusion, one after the other, it gives you a lot more confidence that the thing is real. Uncovering Venus's response to the Sun requires understanding why its ionosphere became thinner around solar minimum. Researchers will be able to better understand how Venus which was once so similar to Earth that it would have been habitable and had flowing water, became into the sweltering planet it is today, with toxic air by having a better understanding of this. As an example, the ionosphere of Venus is prone to leaks, which allows heated gases to escape into space. The key to comprehending how Venus's atmosphere has changed through time is to collect data on these and other ionosphere-related changes. It took a voyage to Venus and a cutting-edge mission to the Sun to verify the readings from Earth. According to Noor E. Rawafi, project scientist for the Parker Solar Probe at the Applied Physics Laboratory, the purpose of flying by Venus is to slow down the spacecraft so that Parker Solar Probe can plunge closer to the Sun. However, we would not pass up the chance to collect scientific information and offer novel insights about the enigmatic planet like Venus. Hitchhiking is how Collision compared the research. Researchers on Venus were keen to take advantage of the Parker Solar Probe's visit to get fresh information and perspectives on the Earth's twin planet. It all comes down to these tiny glimpses, he added, in order to view Venus right now. In the journal Geophysical Research Letters, the results have been published. NASA estimates that the Parker Solar Probe mission will consume 55 times as much energy as it would to reach Mars. It was launched atop a third-stage equipped Delta IV heavy rocket from United Launch Alliance, one of the most potent rockets ever built. To reach the right orbit, however, its trajectory and speed are essential. According to NASA, objects must be launched backward to cancel out the sideways velocity since the Earth and everything on it are moving at a speed of around 67,000 miles per hour in a direction that is sideways to the Sun. According to the Space Agency, because the Parker probe is traveling past the Sun, it must accelerate to nearly 53,000 miles per hour. This will need a push from Venus's several gravity assists and a boost from the robust Delta IV rocket in order to slow down its sideways speed and enable the probe to approach the Sun's surface at a distance of just 3.8 million miles, Venus will provide the probe with a number of gravity aids. NASA notes that Venus, in this instance, slows down the spacecraft's sideways motion so that it can approach the Sun as opposed to speeding up the spacecraft as it would in a usual gravity assist. Parker Solar Probe will also significantly have reduced its sideways speed when it ultimately approaches the Sun, but it will have greatly increased its overall speed as a result of the Sun's gravity. At a speed of 430,000 miles per hour, the Parker Solar Probe will fly by the Sun. It will be the only spacecraft to ever travel this near to the Sun, coming within 3.8 million miles of its surface at its closest approach. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed this video. 
please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.